All right, it looks like we're live, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we'll get started in about uh, four minutes, and if you guys just kind of hang out, we'll be ready to go soon. Uh, I wanted to let you guys all know, those that might be new or um, new to this system, we have, um, you should be able to see me on the screen, and uh, let's see, you should be able to see a chat box on the, the right-hand side, and that is where you guys will say hello. Um, go ahead and chat amongst yourselves. If you have any technical questions, I have Bobby on the other end of things, and he's watching out for you guys. Um, and then if you have any questions for Avalon throughout the training, that's where you will ask those questions. And we will go through and filter out through those questions and make sure that Avalon gets asked all the questions that you have. And uh, We, we want to make sure that you guys get all of your questions in so that we can ask as many as we can um, because, you know, that's why we're live. That's why we do this. So, yeah, I think we're just about, just about, uh, that covers it. There's yeah, some familiar faces <laughs> popping up in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm seeing some too. It's pretty fun. It is. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh. <Good stuff. laughs> it's fun to see, you know, the the familiar names that come through the chat. It's really been fun. Yeah, especially and definitely like, do have our stalwarts, the ones that come every week. So. Yes, yes. We've got some serious fans out there, honey. <laughs> You've done an amazing right. thing. Here. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's been really, really neat to see the the response and the and the encouragement that we get through all of this. I think it's yeah. been really really cool. Yeah. Well, who doesn't want to learn something new every week, you know, and have a great host and oh, I'm brown nosing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep going. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right, come on, bring it on. <laughs> I'll sweeten you up throughout the show, don't you worry. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, you, you deserve it too. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Don't make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makeup's for, right? It covers up all the uh, bright red. <laughs> I had some glare coming from the window earlier, and I'm like, oh, close the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You know, Bobby used to open everything up, all the windows, turn on all the lights, and try and get it as bright as he could. Yeah. And I, I, I would have to go through and shut things down again. And Bobby, more light isn't always better. You know. Yeah. He's learned. He's learned. It's been really, it's been really interesting to. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's like uh, everything. No, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the hosting on, you know, the internet websites and hosting and filming and all that kind of stuff, yeah. it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Yeah. It's like when you start learning cake decorating. Cake yeah. decorating is like you have to be an artist. You have to be a sculptor. You have to be a painter. Okay. You have to be a, you know, an, an architect. You have to be a <laughs> construction. <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. there's so many things that go into cake decorating, and that's pretty much what doing the online thing is, you know, you have to learn to be a writer, you have to be a, yeah. you know, a presenter, you have to be a, you know, a marketer, you have to, you know, there's so many different things that you have to learn to be able to oh, do yes. all this stuff. I can't yeah. imagine. That's a whole different ball game that I am not willing to take on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely been interesting, interesting to learn. Yeah. Well, it's been, I've been watching you for years. I mean, I remember when you first started, and it wasn't even like a video thing. I, I don't think. I think you did like a presentation, yeah, right? Yeah. Just yeah. A PowerPoint presentation with voices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's just been so fun to watch you grow. It has been. You know, it's it's amazing to look back and see how far that we've come, and and the amount of people that have just latched onto this. I, I love it. I love oh it. yeah. Absolutely. I'm a tuner in her. When I can, I, I tune in for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And you know the best thing is that there's the replays. For yes. Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because when I do, I've missed a couple of live ones that I've been really sad about. And then I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've got options here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's about time to get started. So uh, we'll pause for just a few seconds to be able to edit out the beginning and we will go ahead and get started. Awesome. All right. Hello everybody. Welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. We are very excited to have a really awesome guest with us today. Um, Avalon Yarns is 
a very talented cake decorator, self-taught like a lot of us, um, but she just has a lot of talent and skill and has really made a name for herself. Uh, she has won several awards and uh, most recently was in the Texas, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, that takes the cake. <laughs> that takes the cake, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> So Great. first place, is that right? Um, I actually won second place. Second yeah. place, okay. And that takes the cake. Amazing cake on uh, that takes the cake. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You guys should go uh, check it out sometime. It's it was really really cute. It was this cute little um, little girl that was holding a, a a book that was dumping out all of this fun like an octopus and a sailboat and she's just yeah. in a little uh, paper hat. It was so cute. It was so cute. I loved it. It was so, her imagination coming to life, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It was. So. It was very well thought out and a very, yeah. a very. It told a story, and I loved it. I loved it. It was one of those so. ones where I was like, try. I had a different idea in my mind, and that's what it ended up being. But it ended up working out just fine. So. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just go with what works. Um, Oh, yeah. But it worked out very well, and it was very, it was a really great cake. Really Thank was. you. And I got to see some of it come together, which was really fun. Was yeah, fun. late night hotel <laughs> until 4 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys ever, you know, I really highly recommend doing the uh, cake competitions and, and all of the cake events that go on because you really get to know people and you really get to build friendships, you know. Oh, yeah. There was uh, Michelle Boyd and Liz Merrick and, and you and... Carrie. Uh, Carrie, yeah, Carrie Partridge, or mm -hmm. Morris. It's, it's Partridge it's Morris on Facebook. See, I do that. <laughs> Carrie, not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, yeah, it just really wonderful people and and really great friendships that you can build through through competitions I definitely oh, highly recommend it so we're going and, every yeah, year oh. party. <laughs> that's good <laughs> and that takes the cake is a great one it really oh, is yeah. love it love it so much fun all right so Avalon tell me a little bit more about yourself why how did you get started into cake decorating and why did you think that this was something that you wanted to do um, so I actually started as a bakery clerk at a local market here in town um, when I was 15 at the bakery and I was just astonished with everything they did and they were just doing pastries and all that um, and then I got in the back of the house and started making some stuff and um, I then started watching Food Network Challenge <laughs> which I think a lot of us are born from Food Network Challenge and watched Mike McCary and all of them just make these amazing things and I was hooked. I just had to I had to do it. So I was always, you know, inclined with the art part, but I never really I never stuck until I um, did it with cake for some reason. So well, it's been a lot of fun. Artistic <laughs> and I and I would dabble in little things here. I think it's because you know you get a mess around with so many different mediums. You know, like you're you're dealing with taste, you're dealing with texture, you're dealing with painting, possibly like today, and sculpture, and so much. It's just there's so many avenues. I agree, I agree completely. <laughs> so you are on Food Network, is that right? Uh, yes, I assisted um, on Food Network Challenge. Yeah. Awesome. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. And it was here, it's taped here in Denver, so didn't have to go very far. And I think I had a little bit of a leg above the rest because of that. But um, we, yeah, we won. <laughs> Yay, congratulations. Who did you assist? I assisted uh, Rachel Tufel. Oh, love Rachel. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, she's great. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. If you guys didn't see the episode, you should probably go and watch it. What I, I know I've seen that one. Which one was that? Uh, it's a Halloween one. There was a big green chair and a girl sitting in the chair with a skeleton, and it was fun. <laughs> I remember that one. I do remember that one. How fun. Yeah, it was really awesome. fun. <laughs> Thanks. That's very cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it's a good one for the resume, for sure. <laughs> 
Oh, definitely. To be able to say you had a win on Food Network, that's that's something. <laughs> Before they canceled the show, it's so tragic when they did that. Oh, I know. That was so sad to see it go because everybody's dream, everybody's dream was to be on Food Network. Oh, so. I know. I know. I was lucky. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Hmm. All right, so today we have a really cool technique that you're going to be showing. You yes. you have um, figured out how to do um, kind of a, a relief painting effect. Yeah. So um, a lot of this, or a lot of you guys might go old school with this, or it might remind you if you have any background with painting. Um, it's kind of a watercolor technique. So basically, um, water doesn't sit well on a fat or an oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint with cocoa butter and then we're going to do a water wash over it and the water just beads right off of that cocoa butter because it's a fat and it doesn't like to sit on that. So it's basically um, when you were maybe a kid if you would draw with crayons and then you would wash over it with you know paint, uh, watercolor paint, it would just it would disperse and it wouldn't show up where you wrote on with the crayon. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So and it's a technique um, it's also called masking. It's very similar to that. So okay. in watercolor painting too. Very cool. Yeah, I have seen the technique done before on on canvas. Yeah. But to see it done on cake is really cool. So Yeah, it was one of those ideas that was just like floating around in my head. I'm like, I wonder if that would work. I wonder if that would work. I wonder if that would work. And then I tried to do that and I was like, yes. But I know, and you were telling me, Amelia, that you had the same idea, so I thought that was just so cool. <laughs> I know, I was thinking, I, when, when you mentioned that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have, I've thought of trying that before. That is so cool. <laughs> it's a great mind think to light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so fun. That is so fun. All right, so do you have a, a, um, your setup all ready to go? We can just jump right into it. Again, if any of you guys have questions throughout make sure that you ask the questions in the chat box and we will filter through those and try and get as many questions asked as we can and awesome. uh, we'll, we'll just go from there so yeah okay. go ahead Avalon. So I'm going to refocus you on down here on the table um, so what I use is Loran Oils cocoa butter I don't know if you can see that um, and so I just take this when I'm preparing the cocoa butter I take um, a mug of water it's just like halfway full and I warm that up in the microwave for about a minute and a half just to get some steam going and then I will take a spoon and I will just take the cocoa butter into like a little glass thing. We're basically going to create a little double broiler. So you just spoon some cocoa butter right into there and I've already melted some earlier so. So where did you get this Lorenz? So I, um, I got it answer? from a local uh, cake shop called Cake Crafts, but I'm pretty sure you oh, can okay. find it on like Amazon and all that. So then you just set um, the little dish on top of the mug, and it warms up your cocoa butter so you can work with it. Uh, there's many different ways you can warm your cocoa butter. Uh, you can do it like on a heating pad. You just don't want to overdo it because you can actually make it start separating and do some funky stuff. So. so just a, a really low, low temperature. Yeah, yeah. You just want to keep it, you know, um, fluid. And, yeah, it should be good. So I've just got a piece of fondant right here. And basically I'm just going to give you the gist. Now something really cool that I figured out the other night, which I was excited to share with you guys, is that cocoa butter actually glows under black light. It does. Yeah. So... If you have a hard time seeing this, because you are going to be putting a clear onto a white surface, and um, you know it'll have there'll be a little bit of shine because it's wet, but it's sometimes it's hard to see. So if you want to turn the lights off and put the black light on, you can actually um, paint with pretty much glow in the dark. <laughs> that is so cool, and you know that's a good thing to know in case you know you want to do it for some kind of a, a party or function. Absolutely, I know. It's Take it, black light on the cake. That's awesome. I know, right? And then um, I had I actually mixed it with some powdered colors, and those glowed too. So it was just it was a really cool little discovery the other night. Wow, that's yeah. Neat. How, did you, how did you discover that? I was just like, is there? There's got to be a better way to see this 
for, you know, because I had a feeling people might have a hard time um, seeing what they're doing, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I have a black light. Let's just see what happens. And I was thinking the fondant might glow a little bit, but it actually ended up being the cocoa butter. And it's kind of like this greenish, like glow-in-the-dark pink kind of color. It's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So there's a happy little extra tip. <laughs> I'm going to go play around with that. That's really right? cool. <laughs> um, okay, so this one, so I'm just going to do some basic painting so you can see the idea. Um, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just painting some cocoa butter straight onto there. Um, so once you kind of get your design, you then want to put it in the fridge. So you know you can do this straight onto a cake. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is not doing it straight onto a cold cake because it will solidify as it goes on and it might not have as much fluidity. Um, but so I have some that I put in the fridge already and I already have uh, set up. So here's like some set up cocoa butter and it's just a, a basic pattern. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some airbrush color diluted with a little bit of vodka. And I find that vodka works a little bit better than the lemon extract only because lemon extract evaporates so quickly that it will sometimes evaporate right onto the cocoa butter. Okay. So if you can see that, I'm just painting right over it. Look at that. And it's balling off. That is so cool. <laughs> so I thought that was just so much fun. It kind of reminds me of um, there's like these patterns that you can find in like tropical like resort areas, like you know where they've got the almost bleach. Oh yeah, like the Hawaiian like tie dye type yeah. of yeah. So I thought you know you can do so many different patterns too, and then you know if there's like a lot of um, beating up of the color on the cocoa butter itself, you can always go through and just whisk that away. Dry brush it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. A Q-tip works really well for it, too. Perfect. So, you can do There that. are so many things that we can do with this. Oh, I know. I'm loving <laughs> this. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, um, I'll show you. And then, you know, you can always bring some other colors in. Mm -hmm. um, how to do more of a watercolor effect, which can be a little difficult on fondant. But and if you do overload it, sometimes it will stay on top of the cocoa butter, but you can pat it off with a paper towel. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at how cool that is. <laughs> so yeah. You know, I have okay, so I have a dress that I bought for a, a luau type of event. And uh -huh. it looks it looks just like that. It's got that same, you know, kind of glowy tie dye. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, Islander. It's just, yeah, that's totally the effect. <laughs> Look at so that I thought that was really cool. And so um, I'll show you some other things you can do with it. Okay. Yeah. Like for this, for instance, can't see what it is. <laughs> um, there is actually this is gonna be very similar to what I just did. <laughs> but I just I did a little cake foo one. <laughs> Aww, you're so cute. <laughs> a big old dork. <laughs> How fun is that? You know what, this might be actually a fun thing to do like kid activities and things like for a kid's party. Oh, absolutely. Just do a cake that's all plain and then they can yeah. just go and paint it. Absolutely, and then it's like there's really not that big of a mess either, you know, it's like cocoa butter. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Oh, and another thing, um, I actually tried this with butter, just straight up butter, melted some butter and um, painted it onto a cake, and it worked very similar to the cocoa butter, so cake food. Oh, look at that, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, we're having someone that's asking about the, the cocoa butter itself. Uh -huh. They're asking about the shelf life. How long will it store? Oh man, you know, there's no expiration date as far as I can see. Um, I've had this for, oh god, I would say a year. I mean, it takes a while to get through it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there's a shelf life on it, to be honest. Okay. You just got to keep it in a nice, cool place. Um, it's not like buttery when you touch it. It's 
it's like it's solid. It's solid. Kind of yeah. like kind of like coconut oil is, right? Yeah. 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 So you're maybe getting like a solid. Maybe solid the coconut oil, huh? Yeah. And you know, I'm not that in depth with the actual cocoa butter painting yet. Um, Michelle Boyd is really, really good at that, so she might be better one, to, one to ask and we are yeah. actually having Michelle Boyd come on soon so oh, good perfect if you have your cocoa butter questions Michelle will be able to answer them in a couple weeks yeah <laughs> so that's awesome for her <laughs> perfect. Um, so this one I actually I pre-painted this with cocoa butter and um, the colors so I used powdered colors and I mixed them with cocoa butter itself and I painted this I thought it'd be fun to show you guys what um, a wash would look like if you wanted to do like a nice little blue sky behind it. Mm -hmm. Just show you that. You know, it'll stay on there. It, it won't change the color of your cocoa butter. Oh, that's so cool. You know, I mean, that way you can, color. yeah, you can paint with the cocoa butter and then, you know, paint over it and not have to smear stuff. That's, yeah, exactly. That's or layer the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that. Really good option. And you can be fast. I feel like it's faster. You know, like you're just like, all right, bam. You don't have to be quite so careful, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah, which is nice every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so we have a lot of people asking about okay. the medium also. Yeah. Can Do you know if this can be done on buttercream or on um, modeling chocolate? Um, I no on modeling chocolate because modeling chocolate is also a fat. So what's going to happen is the modeling chocolate is going. It's the it's gonna the up the airbrush is going to well. beat up. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. just like the cocoa butter. So it wouldn't work well with that. Um, I don't think it would work well with buttercream either because it is also a fat. So we're working with fats and waters. I don't know the technical terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it does work really, really well on icing sheets. Perfect. So, uh, not wafer paper, I will say that, um, but icing sheets that you can get like um, to print on. So, yeah, like the ones that icing images has, like the edible yeah. icing images. Uh huh. So you can, if you, you know, if you're not very confident with putting it straight onto your cake. That might be a good route to go to first do it onto that and then put it onto your cake just because, you know, once you lay that cocoa butter down, you can't take it off really. It's going to leave that, um, that spot is going to have that grease. So you, mm -hmm. no matter what you put on it, it's probably still going to be there. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if, if you, if you put oil on something, you get oil on your clothes, it stains, you know. Right. It's a mark. It's yeah. Kind of, so. Yeah. I, I, it would be fun to, I don't know if anyone's figured it out yet, but a good way to transfer the cocoa butter onto the cake. Um, I tried doing it on a piece of acetate, thinking I could kind of do like a cocoa butter transfer onto fondant, but it, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. It was a little bit messy. But eh, if someone can figure that out, please share. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so this one, I actually painted the piece of fondant with blue, and then I went over it with the cocoa butter. So it's going to keep that blue color that's behind it. Uh -huh. um, so the only thing to remember with uh, the color mixing, too, is that you have to have a nice, like, you know, blue and yellow make green. And I know that, and it's mm -hmm. not going to make some really muddy color. But as you can see, there's a little little flower that just is showing up. So you can do layers of color and I can then again go over this with more cocoa butter in different designs and something else, you know, will pop up after my next layer. So oh, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. You could do like lighter to darker. Like you could start off with exactly. a really light and then, you know, like a like a white, and then put a light pink over it, and then do oh it yeah, and put a dark pink Great. over it, and uh huh, yeah, I think that's like an cool. ombre, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's uh, that's really the gist of it. <laughs> it's a awesome. really simple and fun and versatile uh, technique. I think I think a lot of people have fun with it. Yeah, well, you know, I think this is. This is really, I, I think, a cool thing that, that we can, ah, I am so going to go do this. <laughs> I, I can't 
believe I never tried it. I thought of it, and then I was like, eh, someday I'll try. What I'm so doing? glad you did it because it is so cool. It is amazing. All right, someone's I'm asking not... about the color. Sorry to. Oh, yeah, no, no. You. Okay, someone says, what's the difference between painting with airbrush color and regular gel color? I painted with regular gel coloring, and it seems uh, like I or like it never really dried. Uh, when eating the fondant decoration, the color started uh, stained hands and lips. How can I avoid this, please? Um, thin it down with a little bit of vodka um, or an alcohol. I, I I use vodka. Some people use lemon extracts. Um, like I said, I feel like that dries a little too fast, almost for what you're doing when, if you're doing this technique. But um, yeah, I know there's some other things people use. But vodka also evaporates quickly, and that's why you use that over water because water will actually start to eat away the fondant. Um, but yeah, so if you actually dilute your water or your gel colors with vodka, you can do the same thing you would do with airbrush colors. So it doesn't have to be airbrush colors for this. You can use gel colors. Just make sure you mix it really well with um, a thinner, like vodka. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I always stick with the airbrush colors just because they're already the the consistency that I want it to be. And yeah. so that's what I use. So you I know, don't really mess with the gel colors much. Right. And the gel colors, you can get these little chunks of um, mm -hmm. color in there, and then that, you know, can ruin what you're doing. So Yeah. You know, it depends on the, the brand of the gel color, um, mm -hmm. but... There was one time that I took, I think it was just the Wilton brand, and I think some Everclear, and when I mixed it together, it just completely gummed up and clumped up. So it's a, a combination oh. of, the, of the things that you're mixing together yeah. that sometimes it makes it you know, lumpy and clumpy, and, and it's hard to deal with that way. So again, that's why I use airbrush colors. <laughs> if yes. you want to stick with your gel colors, great. If you have a, a system that works for you, great. But right. It I totally know. works. It's just, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I prefer just being able to squeeze it right out of the bottle and be good to go. <laughs> so I'm just, um, I'm trying this on some icing sheets now, just so you guys can see. The reason why I really like the icing sheets too is because it has um, an absorbency similar to what you would see with paper. So um, you're getting that really true um, feel of the watercolor paper. And you can kind of, you can add a little bit more and it'll look matte instead of shiny at the end like a fondant can do because the sugars are dissolving. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. I'm going to throw this in the fridge for just one moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Right. We have lots of questions, so. <laughs> we keep them coming. <laughs> All right, what, else, what other questions do we have? Okay. Well, that's All right. Someone settling. asking, will you have the same effect if you airbrush the cake after painting it with the cocoa butter? Um, you know, I don't know about that. I have a feeling you won't. I have a feeling that because you're going um, with such small beads of airbrush that it will actually coat the cocoa butter. Kind of like, because you can actually paint modeling chocolate with airbrush if you do it in small strokes. Um... But if, yeah, I just don't, I don't think that'll work. It might. You can try it. <laughs> I would try it on a scrap piece of fondant. See how it works. There's also um, Fonderific and Choco Pan don't work as well for this technique either because they both are fat-based fondants. So I don't know if you've ever tried to paint on those, but they can be difficult. Okay. They beat good. up a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. All right, another question is, uh, does the cocoa butter absorb into the fondant? No, no, it does, it stays on top of the fondant, so you're going to have like a, a raised image. Mm -hmm. So that's, it, the um, airbrush actually beads off of that raised cocoa butter, so. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see, how long does it take to dry? Oh, so put it in the fridge. Um, or in the freezer. You can throw it in the freezer. And it literally takes less than five minutes. I would put it in the freezer for five minutes. 
take your cake back out, let it come to room temperature because once it's solid, it's pretty solid. Um, you just don't want to touch it with your fingers because it will uh, melt even from the heat from your hands. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just want to make sure you're not in a really hot area either. <laughs> um, an air conditioned space would be best, but we know that's not always doable for all of us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hot right now. <laughs> oh, you know what? I found this really cool um, uh, thing on, on YouTube on how to make an actual air conditioning unit out of a bucket. Oh. I, I will have to find that link and, and share it with you guys because it's really cool. I think every cake decorator in the world that lives in a warm climate needs to know about this because um, on on YouTube, I haven't tried it yet, so don't don't take my word for it. But um, they're saying that it can it go from you know it can change your temperature like 20 degrees. Oh my god! In, in just like 45 minutes or something like that. Not and having a problem. Like crazy, crazy. So and it's and it's minimal uh, products. You know, you, it's it's a little air fan that you point down into a, a hole that you've cut into a a big you know, the big 10-gallon, 20-gallon buckets, whatever they are, those big, giant buckets. And then you just put a, a gallon of um, frozen water in there, and you keep the lid on the water so it doesn't put moisture in the air, but it, it sends the cold. Oh, I was going to ask eat. about the moisture, but... Yeah, no, it's so if, <laughs> if you keep it covered, then it, it sends the cool out without sending the, the moisture out. Oh, that is so, so cool. Yeah, there's like holes in the side that you cut, and, it's, and it blows out because of this fan. So it's like, how genius is oh, that? You <laughs> You're so good. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll see if I can find that link for everybody. And, uh, yeah, see if we can you. My freezer is really cold. Okay. So this is the icing image or the icing images paper. Um, we'll do muddying up my colors. It's nice to have a few paintbrushes because you'll start mixing colors and then they'll get muddy. And so I like to keep a few by me at all times. So you can really get this guy wet and oh, I don't have any good mixing colors. Lame. So it's getting kind of muddy, so don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my... well, you're you're doing a demo. Sometimes you just have to work with what you've got, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm trying to do. So, and then sometimes I will just blot it a little bit, and it'll take that surface off. But you know, you can get really detailed with it, and you can get some nice watercolor effects. So. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. I love it. And that's just on the edible icing sheets, right? Yes. Yep. 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 And I've they've with they withstand quite a bit of um, liquid, so that's nice. Where with the wafer Very paper, cool. you can do it. Don't even try it with wafer paper. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, nah, I don't really want a gummy mess on my table. So <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, I just put up a link for those of you that are on the chat um, for that air conditioning bucket thing because I just think that's so cool. And it would be very, very good to have for something like this. Anytime you're working with anything chocolate-based, you're going to have, um, or cocoa-based, you know, the mm -hmm. butter-based. It's going to it's gonna melt on you if you're not in a, in a good oh, temperature. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So sad. <laughs> All right, so another question. Um, let's see. How long, oh, we got that. How long does it take to dry? Uh, does the cocoa butter smear after it's painted? Um, it can if it isn't set up, so you just have to make sure you put it in the fridge. Once it's solid, as long as your room is pretty cool, you shouldn't have any problems with it smearing. Like when you're putting, when you're applying the um, the airbrush colors, it won't smear. You can just apply and apply and apply and apply. As long as it's solid and cold, it won't smear. 
Very so cool. you have to be like super careful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very cool. Like the cocoa <laughs> butter, I would call it um, the same consistency as a wax. So like imagine you're painting on your cake with, um, you know, a candle wax. And that's kind of what you're ending up with. Doesn't taste like that though. So. <laughs> okay. That's very cool. Oops. All right. And so there's another question. Do you ever mix your airbrush colors before you start painting? Um, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you have a really particular um, cake in mind or a design in mind. Absolutely. Definitely. Very cool. All right. Um, Someone said, what about wafer sheets? You said no wafer sheets. I, I saw someone uh, in the chat say that they actually did use this on a wafer sheet. Okay. You have to be really, really careful with, yeah. the, with the colors, though. And yeah. Yeah, I, you'd have to be like almost dry brushing it. Right, exactly. And I just, I don't know if it, once you're getting onto that dry brushing, it can. The color, the color can settle on the cocoa butter itself a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting that true color that's behind it. But if you can get it to work, I mean, all the power to you. That's just one I was just like, man. <laughs> oh, someone said with the airbrush um, effect. I, I, sorry, wasn't paying that close of attention when you were talking about the it, whether you could do it with an airbrush. Uh -huh. um, someone said the airbrush might dry the color too fast. Exactly. Um, on, on the, and so I just thought if we add that in there, it might yeah. be helpful for people to understand why you probably shouldn't try doing it with an airbrush. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're like really close up with the airbrush um, to the cake and you're kind of getting some overspray, <laughs> it might work, but you don't really want that. So you really want like a really watery, fluidy, um, mixture. That's why we're using that's why we wouldn't use straight gel color because you want it to you want it to bead off of the actual cocoa butter. So that makes sense. I'm okay. showing you the technical so, terms for all this. <laughs> but you know what? It's all good. <laughs> we all get confused with all the technical terms anyway, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Alright, so someone's asking again, um, where do you okay Source for your wafer paper, or no, for your paper, your edible. For the edible paper. Um, I actually got this at uh, Michael's. So it's just, I'll show you what the front looks like. So it's okay. just that's, um, that's Wilton a Wilton. Brand. Yeah, yeah. it's just a Wilton brand one. Um, you can definitely, you know, you can use whatever brand you like. I'm sure they'll all work similar, but that's worked really well for me. So awesome. you get that, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or... Amazon, I'm sure. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, there there are a few out there. Um, the one that comes to my mind is icing images. Yeah. Um, just because I, I use them. I have, got the... Right, and I haven't tried that exact brand, so I can't really tell you, but um, I'm guessing it would work similar. I, I would imagine. I would imagine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, someone's asking, um, can you do this on, like, a... I, I lost the question, but on gum paste or on fondant that's had tiles added to it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually tried it on gum paste the other night. I was making, I was trying to get like that striped tulip effect, you know, like the parrot tulip. Oh, yeah. So it worked pretty well. I think it was a little too shiny for my liking because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the gel colors or the airbrush colors will give that shine to it. Um, but it, it worked, definitely worked. It would be fun to like layer some colors on the sugar flower with that, I think. Yeah. Well, if you were going for something more whimsical, I mean, yeah. I, I could see that being a really solid fun, line. actually. Yeah. 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 That would so. be really cool. Definitely. Okay. okay. Um, how about just colored cocoa butter on wafer paper? Can you color oh, absolutely. cocoa butter on wafer paper? Yes. Um, Cocoa butter is going to work wonderfully on wafer paper because it is a fat and it's not going to um, dissolve the wafer paper like our liquids would. So that's going to work really well on wafer paper. Cocoa butter, oil color, um, definitely. Oh, and we had another question. How do you color the cocoa butter? Uh, so I have these 
powders. Um, these are CK powders. Okay. But um, I also use another brand um, called Sugar Art. They're really, really good too. Um, those are just what I have around. <laughs> but yeah, you just, <laughs> you just mix right into the cocoa butter. So if I were you, I would maybe... Um, the, I, I like this whole double broiler thing. I don't know why. I'm sure there's easier and better ways to do it. That's where Michelle Boyd might come in. But um, I would use maybe a bowl instead of a cup, and you can just put um, a plate on top of the bowl with your different colors so it keeps it nice and warm while you're working with it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right. And then, again, uh, can you use this technique with pastillage? Ooh, I haven't tried that. I've never actually worked with pastillage, so but I'm, I'm guessing you can because it's it's all sugar and I'm guessing it'd be absorbent. So I'm guessing yes. Very cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been so fun. So fun. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so I, glad. <laughs> I think this technique is so so cool, and I think I can. I can think of so many ways to use this now. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to see a ton of fun watercolor type. Yeah, if you, guys, if you guys do this technique or any of the other techniques that we show on Cake Foo, share them with us. We, we love to see this kind of stuff. It's really yes. fun. Yes, so. yes, yes. Remember, glow in the dark. Well, glow under black light. That works too. Yeah, that's so good. Extra tip. <laughs> Great. This has been so much fun. Yes, thank you so much. I was looking. Someone just said, I love the idea of this technique on sugar flowers. I've been racking my brain how to color certain varieties of flowers, and this opens up the possibilities so much. So. Yay! Just be careful um, with the sugar flowers, too, with the gum paste, because if you do add too much moisture to it, it can make the um, gums gummy again mm -hmm. and after they've hardened. So just be careful with that, just a little just tip. Light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be light yep. with it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Avalon, for coming on and sharing this with us. You just are such an amazing artist. And I think that mm -hmm. I I think it's really fun to get people like you that come on that, you know, there there are people that are very traditionally taught and you know, and but then there's us that have taught ourselves and we have to be creative sometimes, and so it's it's fun to come up with these ideas and try them out and see what works and see what doesn't work, and and so to be able to come on and share what you've tried and what works, uh, I think that that's just really really neat that you're you're willing to to share this information with everybody. Absolutely, I'm so glad. It was so much fun, Amelia. Like always. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, everybody, again. Um, go try it. Show us your work, and uh, we'll see you guys all next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>